Zurich is surrounded by the breathtaking Swiss Alps, making it a city with both summer and winter charm. Uniquely positioned at the very heart of Europe is Zurich, Switzerland's largest city, and a byword for efficiency, order and stability. And it's on this steady platform that design and all its disciplines have flourished. The Swiss inclination towards practical solutions has allowed their creativity and ingenuity to design a city and culture that stands the test of time. The people here in Zurich are also very sophisticated. They like sophisticated things. So I think Swiss design has become the global state of the art in branding. Zurich presents a stylish yet sober facade. Many parts left unchanged since medieval and reformation times. But fear not, local creatives are transforming Switzerland's larger city into its cultural capital. And this transformation is being powered by design. Welcome to Zurich and designer travel. The Swiss are super efficient, and if you arrive at Zurich Airport, there will be a train every 10 minutes to take you to the Transport Nerve Centre, Central Station. From there, it's a few minutes in a cab, tram or bus to the Hotel Grolisch, our design hotel recommendation. The building started life as run-down apartments dating back to the 1930s, but all that's in the distant past. Bang in the centre of Zurich's design district, this hotel is the epitome of Swiss minimalism. On entering, there's a warmth and attention to lighting detail that gives you that intangible, luxurious feel. It's all about uh, secrets. Uh, I'm convinced that uh, the secret of good, uh, good architecture is you enter, you look around, you go to the reception, you go to the restaurant, to the lounge, or you go into the court, you go to your hotel, and all those different uh, paths you take inside the hotel structure should be an experience. One big potential was the uh, inner courtyard, which was formerly an industrial space, and we saw the possibility to uh, create a real um, quiet space in there. And it's only right that we should lead off with a Swiss design success story. And there's no better company to profile than Gottschalk and Ash, founded by the legend of graphic design, Fritz Gottschalk. With offices in Canada and headquarters in Zurich, the mission is crystal clear. To communicate with as little fuss and unnecessary decoration as possible, this is hardcore Swiss graphic design. The firm got started in Montreal. 45 years ago, which is a hell of a long time in our business. What we try to do is combine the American way of thinking, which means generosity, and combining it with European tradition and modernism. You know, after the Second World War, we were lucky in this country. We had no destroyed buildings. The country was still intact, and therefore that gave us a chance to develop further and we made headway and we stood out. And I'm talking about the 40s and 50s. And that was combined with this love of the Swiss for, for details and simplicity. And, you know, Switzerland is not the country of uh, flashes in the pan. You know, it's more traditional. It takes a certain amount of time for things to develop. But once they're developed, they withstand the wear and tear of time. I think Today, Swiss design is not Swiss anymore. It's when you look at branding, and it's what they basically do, branding is uh, pick a font, pick a color, uh, make a logo, uh, do it consistent. So that's basically the values of Swiss design. So I think Swiss design has become the global state of the art in branding. So I think it's still there, but it's not Swiss anymore. And in Switzerland, probably you don't probably see it anymore that much. Well, what makes me a little sad off the cuff is that there is not more what we consider good design. And good design has nothing to do with l'art pour l'art, but design that really helps people to understand what you want to get across without having to think 
whatever they're looking at is all about. I, I always tell to young people, even working here, start with sketching. Because when you're working on computers, you start to do uh, variations of things. And when you're sketching, you start, and with every sheet of paper, you start a new world. A new view. Yeah. And that's you're way faster yeah. in, in sketching than on sitting on computers. Well, this is uh, very special because it, it's, it's, it's very much, much a reduction on, on black and white. And this is about a, a new brand for a publishing house in Germany. We are trying to make people aware of quality is in principle timeless and that's what we aspire. We aspire to do work which looks perhaps not even all that great today, but it grows, it becomes better as time goes by and becomes stronger as time goes by. Well, it's clear Fritz hates bad design, but what does Sasha like about Zurich? I, I really like uh, the, the lake area because they, they had a national exhibition there and they refurbished all the lake side. And I think they, they have done a brilliant job on that. If urban grunge was to be distilled into a bag, that would be Freitag. And it says a lot about the new Zurich that this youth-orientated brand, looking more Bronx or Brixton, was created right here. Freitag started in 1993 with the two brothers, Marcus and Daniel Freitag, actually, just down the road. The idea actually started in their brains in 1993 while living on this transit route just next to us. And they actually just needed a transportation device uh, for riding on their bikes. So they thought, what could we use to actually build a bag out of it? And they saw these trucks coming by and, and figured, uh, what are they probably going to do with these truck tarps? And figured, let's try this truck tarp and started to, to produce a bag out of this material. And also with this idea that it's a recycling thought in the background and this, this recontextualization, which they actually do. So take other used materials and put it into another context, make kind of a, a next life out of it. This just probably came along right after they, they found out that many people like this kind of bag, this kind of style. Um, what kind of products they use, and that's what makes them probably think ahead to use other materials like inner tubes, truck tarps, of course, and seat belts and airbags. We started to build this used container building in 2006, and of course the, the idea of recycling material. So they, they started again with the idea about what does the truck transport? And they also transport containers and then they started to look around for containers. Um, had a talk with, with an architect and they figured that they could probably build a building out of uh, containers, which is also recycled. Unfortunately, the ongoing development of your request required the distinctive container tower to be dismantled and reconstructed in another part of the city. But hey, that's the Freitag recycling story once again. And where the stylish Sasha suggests we hang out in Zurich? Another bar which you could go to, of course, the Volkshaus, which is a nice restaurant, just has been rebuilt and it gets a bar and a restaurant in there, which is quite nice, where we sometimes go to and have an after work beer. And now to find out what the local fashionistas are wearing. The locale is discreet and stylish, as is the designer, Vietnamese-born and Swiss-trained Tran Hin Phu. Phu has earned a reputation for working with high-end fabrics, combining fine tailoring and establishing a clear vision for what Zurich's best-dressed women should be wearing. Taking couture from the catwalk to the real woman takes time, and that's just what Phu is creating. 
Uh, fashion changed a lot for me. I did it for many years ready to wear. I presented my collection in Paris and in Berlin. And now since two years, I, I'm more focused to doing unique pieces because I want to slow down the fashion a little bit. So I create my, my shop here to a private room and call it Tron in Fu Private Collection. I want to bring the woman more style and class and take more time to choosing nice fabric to do something what is really perfectly fitted and that's uh, my idea of fashion and that's what's really interesting me at the moment. Zurich is a very rich city and the people are very loyal. The people they love to have something what it's very good made and the fabric is very in good quality. And, uh, but uh, the people here in Zurich are also very sophisticated. I like sophisticated things. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is a skirt. Okay. And, um, That's a skirt? It's, yeah, it's a silk skirt. And uh, I was interested in this structure and this is all single pieces. I s sewing it by hand on it. This is a nice dress. Whoa. This is 70 meter fabric. Okay. And this could be a wedding dress. Yes, this is really one of my favorite dresses. This is really well. like wow factor, yeah. isn't it? If you've got somewhere special exactly. to go. I mean, the jewelry in your store is amazing. Can you tell me a bit more about this particular piece? Yeah, this jewelry, I love it a lot. It's, I, it's a company in London uh, called Butler & Wilson. I think it's really matching to my clothes. It's so colourful and my clothes are colourful, so... <laughs> <laughs> Kunstmuseum is uh, the Museum of Modern Art from Zurich. And there is the big uh, Picasso exhibition at the moment. That's very interesting. The Kunsthaus has opened in its current site in 1910 as neither museum or art gallery, but both according to architect Karl Moser. Inside this building, they're busy incubating the future stars of world architecture. This is ETH Zurich. Counting among its many esteemed alumni, Jacques Herzog and Pierre de Moron, ETH is a prestigious school to have on any architectural CV. The Department of Architecture at the ETH is considered as one of the top, top universities uh, globally. Uh, our speciality is the connection between architecture and design uh, with technology, with building construction. So in comparison to the universities in the States, we have been able to maintain a strong tie to the building industry uh, and to practice. Martin, there seems to be a lot of activity happening in this room. What, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, this is the, the, the room of the first year design students in architecture here at the ETH Zurich Department of Architecture. They are, some of them, and uh, are, quite, are really in the critiques now. Uh, they get uh, evaluated the projects they do. And uh, yeah, that's the place where the, the future architects from ETH uh, are learning their job. Yeah, Swiss people are very hard working. They, uh, they know what they have to do. But it's not only Swiss people here inside. Uh, we, have, we are quite international also. Maybe 30 or 40 percent uh, of uh, all the students are from abroad. The ETH mission linking students to the engineering realities of industry is evident in their impressive testing workshops. And as for technology, this exquisite and organic flowing structure is created by none other than, well, a robot. Wow, this is amazing. What's this? That's one of the prototype walls that we built for the International Architecture Biennale in Venice. That's what I said. A robot is responsible for creating forms hitherto impossible by mere man-made techniques. And the results are anything but robotic. Wow, this is huge. What, I feel like I'm seeing the future being created right here. Well, we're actually using the robots as designers because it allows us to do very intricate, very detailed designs down to the level of the material. Uh, while with working with manual uh, methods, we, we are drawing a planet and hoping that someone might be able 
to build that, it's actually kind of a direct link to the material making. And it's going to be one of the major shifts uh, of the work between architects and craftsmen in the future. You're in control. And yes. this one? Yes. And, and this, this one. one. Oh. I did that. I can't you miss. did that. <laughs> now basically it's moving this block right. uh, through a hot wire and it's cutting pieces out of that block. And all those different, uh, differently cut blocks, so mm. every block is cut individually, are then uh, uh, assembled together to uh, kind of build a, a large catenary vault structure. Well, it's a conceptual design act. So basically, as designers, we think about how would we like something to be built? How would we like something to materialize? And then uh, we transfer this uh, concept into a program code. And then this program code does the job for us. So basically, the robot enables us to, as architects, to directly uh, get in touch with the kind of material uh, fabrication methods. So when you draw a line on the computer, basically that line is the information for something to be cut, you know, to be built up or something. So it connects actually the designer to the physical world of materials. Technology can't be um, stopped. So technology happens anyway. The question here is whether architects look at that technology and see what qualities it can bring to the profession and then the kind of uh, uh, effects on, on the shifts uh, in, in the building industry, uh, those will have to be negotiated and, and, and discussed. I think there will be higher quality uh, work coming out from that. Awesome. Cutting edge and ETH. Zurich West was once the city's industrial zone. Now the factories are mostly gone and replaced with a mix of culture and hip retail. And the spine of this urban renewal is Im Viaduct. And one prominent tenant in this uber trendy district is Fashion Slave, an all go collective who reckon that Zurich man is ready to spread his fashion wings. Yeah, I think they are stylish men who think about fashion and how they look they prepare in the morning and they, uh, they, they do care about what they wear. Uh, we wanted to have actually a bright range of styles, like freaked out guy to the banker, but now we are getting more and more the to style. one style, which one is um, sellable in Zurich. Actually, all the styles we have, they are like unknown mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Zurich. We still have to like show it to the men, and then first they maybe just have a look and they think, ooh, I've never seen this before, and then the second time they come and they want to have it. So this area, they, they are like arches, and it's called Im Viaduct. So they started to build stores, those stores in the arches, like they started like three years ago. They had a lot of illegal bars and restaurants and small shops and it was pretty cool actually too. But it's like everywhere else. If, if a place is cool and unknown and underground, they rebuild it and it gets posher. Naturally walking down the street in a lovely suit and then I go like this. Ow! What's the concept? What were you thinking here? Yeah, this is a cotton suit, tailor suit. And um, we thought about like that it should look quite normal and wearable, but then, mm -hmm. if you see from behind, it should like really, it should look really fancy. You blind people point. by going like this. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Everything for both sides of your personality. Yeah. And the tips from our fashion slaves? The old city, the old town from Zurich. It's very nice to be there. Um, there are a lot of shops, and it's a nice place, and you have a great um, view. Now, 
in case you thought Swiss architecture was all about formality, meet Peter Vetch. For decades, Peter has been suggesting that living in a cave, or rather an earth-covered home, was environmentally friendly and forward-thinking. Considered by the architectural establishment as out of touch, or maybe even a crackpot, climate change and sensible environmental concerns may just be forcing a reassessment of Peter's ideas. I have seen that the whole society goes in the wrong direction. Man consumes a lot, man makes the nature kaputt, man the architecture verbetoniert alles. In der Schweiz haben wir jede Sekunde wird eine Riesenfläche verbetoniert. Und ich habe die Idee gehabt, man muss ein Haus bauen, das man mit Erde überdeckt und dann hat man Grün drauf. Das verbessert die Luft. Es hilft isolieren. Ich fühle mich wohl drin. Und das ist ein Riesenvorteil. Peter's models are undoubtedly beautiful, organic creations, and you do get the feeling that his ideas may be moving from the periphery to prophecy. When I build a house, when I so a house, baue, so, 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 when so a house, then I have to strong decks, have strong decks. And when I build so a house, baue, I make so a house with the nature, I can even cover it up. Weil hier hat so viel Energiekraft drin, oder? durch die Statik, ich kann das sehr stark belasten. Drei Meter Erde, ohne Probleme. So do these amazing ideas actually work? You bet they do. And in the absolute heart of Switzerland is Giswil and the dream home of Urs and Silvana Schwab. Giswil is, is in the center of Switzerland, just opposite uh, of, of the valley, there's another small valley and there is the geographical center of Switzerland. When we decide to buy, build a house, we, we looked around for the forms of the houses and we see the most of, of the houses are just squares. It's just a normal form. And uh, as we look in the internet for round houses, you find uh, actually Peter Fetch. On this picturesque site, this new age couple have created a cave for the new millennium. It was a great experience to work together with Peter Fetch and, uh, he bring in his idea, I could learn a lot about building houses and on the other way we can, could bring in our um, crea creativity. creativity. So the house is standing now here as we liked it. Urs and Silvana live, work and create in this remarkable home. Yeah, it's a greenhouse. I mean, actually, they have a good insulation. Yeah, we have, we have the, the earth on the top of, of, of the house as well, who keeps also the, the, the warm inside, the cold outside. We have these big windows, which actually in, in the winter time, when the, when the sun is, is running deep, it, it helps to heat up the house. And in summertime, the, the sun stays more high, so uh, the, 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 the sunlight is coming in, but not the heat. Actually, so we don't have to cool it down in the summer. The room is nearly round, and this, it's a good feeling to sleep, like in the stomach, stomach for a mother. <laughs> the bathroom, the second one. So also here we see this uh, nice mosaic Silvana did. Yeah. The light is coming up from the top, or coming down from the top, which makes a really uh, lightening, shiny room. Late in life, the patient Peter Vert is enjoying validation with several other projects underway, including this kindergarten and community center. So Peter, it looks like you want us all to live underground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, great, but just one question. Where are you going to find people this small? That's in kindergarten, and the French has been like Oh, Peter, it's a touch of Zoolander in Zurich. Who knew? So, that's a small swatch of Zurich's creative fabric. The Swiss may argue that in many ways, Swiss design is default for much of modern international design, and they may have a point. Modernist architectural masters Le Corbusier's final building is on the shores of the beloved Lake Zurich. A reminder that the financial stability of the city has always afforded creativity with a welcoming culture. 
Now, where the next generation takes the Swiss design will no doubt be dynamic and future forward. Stay tuned. This has been Designer Travel Zurich.